Hey, big sister. What's your least favorite show? That gets my goat. Hey, everybody. Welcome to That Gets My Goat. We're here with part two of our Superman diatribe. Yeah, this is the literal that gets my goat uh, the, or the, the traditional that yeah, gets my goat of complaints. Something that actually got your goat. So I'm Big Anklevich. And, and I'm Rish Outfield. And we're off and running. And for the next hour, I will be complaining about Man of Steel in this voice. <laughs> in a world where Superman couldn't be super. In a banal world where kryptonite is HIV. I could do a whole episode talking about Richard Donner's vision of Superman and that movie, that 1978 movie, which I still think is the greatest comic book movie ever made. Just his idea of doing it all straight and real, you know, verisimilitude is the thing that he kept saying and, and he still says all the time when he talked about that movie is because they had this idea of doing it like the Batman television show in the 60s had been done. I guess it was because none of these people had grown up loving Superman or believing in Superman or I don't know I mean that Batman TV show did so much damage to the idea of comic books and what they were that it's only now in the next century when people are starting to say oh you know what that's not just for morons and little kids anymore but he puts so much gosh there's got to be a word and I, I wish I were smarter so that I could give you the word for verisimilitude well verisimilitude but there's some kind of <laughs> earnestness or something of what Christopher Reeve brings to that role there's the part where Lois says why are you here and he says I'm here to fight for truth justice in the American way and she's like well you're going to fight every elected official in town and he says you don't really mean that Lois or whatever and there's just <laughs> some What's the word I'm looking for for that? And to me, that is Superman. That is somebody who always sees the best in people and always I, I just looks on the bright side of life. Do 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 do. He mm -hmm. is inspiring and a positive role model all the time. Right. Captain America is Marvel's version of that, and he has the excuse of being from the greatest generation right where he hasn't been marred and tainted by the cynicism of our era and of seeing you know watergate or vietnam or fill in the blank of all the things that have shattered people's hopes and dreams and belief in higher power belief in government belief in an honesty yeah i don't know we do live in a world where crime sometimes pays and the good guy often finishes last and all that. But Superman is one of those things that should never waver. Now, again, this is my interpretation of who he is, but somebody that no matter what is placed before him, he will make the right decision. He will sometimes make the hard decision, but because of his innate goodness that, that has no bounds. And that's what I think people look for in religion. And I'm putting words in the mouths of other people, but it, you want a higher power. You want to know that there's somebody looking out for you who will always be there and will always do the right thing and always sees the best in you, not just in himself. That to me is Superman. And one of my favorite comic books was when Jeff Loeb wrote Superman and Batman together. Superman would say that about Batman. You can do better. You will always stand tall. And for God, and Batman was just like, you don't know me at all. I'm not you. <laughs> I'm not a perfect guy or whatever. And it just, it illuminated the difference between these two characters. Because Batman, and again, that's Jeff Loeb's interpretation that happens to be the same of his mind, walks a thin line between hero and villain. Right. And it would just take a push to get him on the side of the bad guys or whatever. He terrorizes the bad guys. And how far do you take that before you become a bad guy? Uh, it's something that I think people have examined and all that, but it's, it's hard. It's kind of an ugly idea. Right. And maybe people want Batman to be more like Superman. 
but I don't know because people don't want Superman to be that guy either because uh, when was it? I, very recently I was talking about it. People want their heroes thrown down to the ground. We want to spit on them. We want to sh- say, you're no better than we are. And I don't know when that began and if it will ever end. I think that's kind of the cool thing about Superman and Batman is you have the opposite you don't want Superman to be Batman because you already have Batman. And it's kind of, I guess, what we're getting with this Man of Steel is you've got Superman being Batman. And what's the point of that? We already have Batman. We don't need another exact same character doing that. So it's kind of disappointing that and maybe, I guess you probably know better than me, maybe it's not actually going to be that way. And maybe it just seems that way. Oh, well, I don't know for sure. But I did listen to what they were saying and Somebody asked him about the John Williams music and that he was willing to comment on. And and you can, if I haven't already told you, you can guess what he said. Anybody could guess what he said because there's only one answer. And the answer is that stuff was great, but we are going another way. They always have to start it with this was good, what you're saying. But, and to make a grimy down to earth, more identifiable whatever it is superman that may win a lot of people onto superman's side but it just it's not what i want it's not what i need superman is the hero we need not the one that we deserve i i don't know, <laughs> I, I don't know but <laughs> superman is like you said before batman is if you had the drive and the means like batman does then you could be batman but superman is like the paragon of virtue he's that thing that's up on the pedestal or whatever that you're supposed to aspire to but you can never you can't be but you try as much as you can to do what's right like he does to choose the you know the noble course instead of being like batman and terrorizing the bad guys into submission that there's there that's like two ideals of the civil rights movement of Malcolm X, you know, using force or whatever, and Martin Luther King saying, and I know that that's been done to death. People are always talking about Xavier and Magneto with those two, but you know, one leading by example and, and on high, and the other is no, you know, we're going to show them, we're going to force, you know, that kind of thing. There is a taint on Superman You're a taint. <laughs> on Superman Returns in a lot of people's eyes. And there must be some people in power at Warner Brothers that really hated it. I mean, they didn't do the sequel, even though they wanted to and they had ideas for it. And we were going to get to see Brainiac. And, and the first one didn't lose money. But they went ahead with the sequel to Batman Begins. They didn't go ahead with Superman Returns. And then with this reimagining of Superman, I get the impression that they're looking at everything that Superman Returns was and saying, not that and not that. And not that. Yeah. And the only thing that Superman Returns brought to the table that they seem to be embracing is a fallible, more human Superman with, you know, the bastard child and the doubts and and, and all that. And and you know what? I understand. I mean, Christopher Reed's Superman had doubts. Yeah. that's That's an interesting thing you could play with Superman as he has that innate goodness that he wants to do that but you know having doubts on that and and maybe he comes to a decision and he he makes the wrong decision for once and has to deal with oh shoot i should have done the right thing like i always have before and instead i chose the wrong thing and now look where i am or something like that and he has to uncle ben is dead what something like that yeah he, he fixes he has to fix the mistake that he made before when he had the choice between a, a perfect the normal way he would choose and maybe a less noble way of doing it or something like that you know it could give you a, a storyline of him going against his himself and then realizing that he blew it and having to go back and fix that choice later well, did did we not see that in superman 2 yeah it's kind of it's like superman 2 where he gave up being superman just for the girl because we don't really see any weakness except for the very end of the movie in superman we cut ahead and, and it's been a dozen years or something like that we don't see any learning curve he goes from arriving at the fortress of solitude 
to being 30 years old and having the cape on and it's his first day in Metropolis and he achieves all these things, we don't see him try and fail and learn and, and, and have these problems. And maybe that's a flaw in some people's minds. But I don't know. I, I, I never missed that in the Christopher Reeve Supermans of, of, of him having to learn learning curve. certain things. And I understand that you need a amount of weakness in your character for people like me to relate to him. I mean, we don't, I, I, I can't get into a Vin Diesel type character and, or, right. you know, there's only one James Bond that I has ever emotionally re well, there was George Lazenby. Okay. There's two uh, emotionally reached me. I need to be able to see that these guys get hurt or these guys are afraid or these guys have doubts and all that stuff. But with Superman, it's not like that. He's not a man he in isn't. so much he's something higher, something greater. He's he is an illegal alien. Anyhow, so that's my interpretation. And, and I just, I was so bummed out about that, partly because I liked Superman Returns. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that people hate, I have no problem with. And some of the things that people hate, I guess I can see, you know, I, I, for example, they took the suit, which worked perfectly in four movies with Christopher Reeve in them, and they decided to modernize it gussy it up gussy it up and, and it didn't look <laughs> as good and it seems like they've built on that with man of steel and taken that suit and made it worse yeah i'd have to agree with you the worst part i think is we know for certain that we're going to get a cg cape all over the place i mean i've seen pictures from the set where the, he's in the suit but he doesn't have a cape on and the weird thing i don't get is he is standing around he's like just standing there in the middle of the city or something so why does he need a cg cape when he just stands it's gonna be flapping all crazy up in the breeze I mean, I can understand sometimes wanting a CG cape while he's flying or doing something where his cape might do unusual things or something, do more flappity flap. But when he's just standing there talking to somebody or something, why? Well, I don't know. It falls into the same category as the CG costume in Green Lantern. Yeah, exactly. A, it costs more than it would just to do it normally. And two, it draws the eye unless something is done perfectly. You know what I mean? So unless somebody takes the time and the expenditure to make it look totally real, a segment of the audience that you and I are part of are going to notice it and say, what, what is wrong with it? Oh, it's CG. The same way that I did when I saw Superman flying on that Man of Steel preview stuff, and which granted may not be done. I mean, it's a whole year before that comes out. But it's a guy on wires and you remove the wires is He's still a guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I don't... It's like the CG cape. Even if he's standing there and he's facing off with somebody and his cape is supposed to be blowing way the heck back there, it would look so much better if they put a real cape on, got a big old fan and blew it at him so that it flaps like it would when there was an actual wind. And, and, and would, if it doesn't look better, and it would save it costs nothing. $10 million too. It's like I said earlier, I, they don't care about me as much as they care about the 17-year-old or whatever who doesn't know who Christopher Reeve was. It's true. And I feel like I've, I've complained and bitched a lot. I'll probably still see the movie. I love Superman. I really do. I, we, you and I saw Dark Knight with your brother-in-law, who's a super fan. He's a big fan of DC Comics. Look in the sky. And it's I, a bird. It's a plane. No, it's super fan. I think afterward I wanted to talk to him and I think he thought because I didn't respond to it that I, well, it's like, well, because you're a Marvel guy. <laughs> and it's, no, it's not that at all. I love Superman. I, I, like I said, Captain America is Marvel's Superman, but I don't love Captain America the way I love Superman. Right. Superman you knew probably way before Captain America, oh, yeah. I would assume. There's nobody he... <laughs> that doesn't know Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. Those characters, doesn't matter what comic book company you end up allying with in the end, those three you always knew first. Well, for our generation. Yeah, it's For true. the younger kids, they're, they're totally different. You know, they live in a time when there are hundreds of superheroes and and franchises that are always going. And, you know, there there may right. be kids out there that know the Teen Titans but don't know the Justice League. Yeah, I suppose that's true. My kids know the Teen Titans from that little cartoon. Yeah. Okay. So, like I was saying, and I know I've been talking for a long time. I don't want to end on a wholly negative note. 
like I was saying, I love Superman and there was positive to be had. Now, I may have responded badly, but this guy, Henry Cavill, I hope it's Cavill. If it's just Cavill, I'll feel dumb, but he's British. So it's probably Cavill. Probably is Cavill. He looked like Superman. That's good. Uh, and yeah, this is going to sound super gay and I don't care. A ridiculously good looking guy, just like a beautiful, holy crap, that's what I want to be guy. And there was one moment at the end of the preview, whatever you want to call it, where Lois kissed Superman. Amy Adams plays Lois in this version. And I felt something at that moment. Now, granted, it was it moved. a quarter of a second. <laughs> it moved, Jerry! I, uh... <laughs> and, and so I was just like, oh, okay, well, that's interesting. And, and, and that I would respond to that is surprising to me, but... It shows me that there's still room to grow. There's still things maybe to be su- surprised by in, in a good way. Like I said, they were doing Q&A and people could just stand up and ask these guys questions. And there was a guy and he got up there and it was his turn. And they're like, OK, next question. And they cut to him and he was silent. I think I assumed that his microphone had, was off. Because if somebody said this, then this was new for 2012. If somebody said, can you sign this or can you give me a baby? They would cut the microphone and they'd never had that before. They'd always said, don't make personal requests, but people did anyway. And this was the first year where they would say something like, oh, I was wondering if I could have your, and you wouldn't hear the rest. Their mouths would be moving, but you wouldn't see what they were saying. Yeah. I remember when, when we were there, the last time I went so, uh, here and there, a couple of people would get up and try and pull that crap. And the whole crowd would just start booing that person viciously. I appreciated that, I'll have to say. Because it's, it's a faux pas, because you don't do that, because all of us would like to have his autograph. You know right. what I mean? There's thousands of us, but you don't do that. Anyhow, the reason this guy was saying nothing was because he was emotional. He was he 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 wanted to get up there and thank them for making a, another Superman movie. And it's hard for me to to express it without crying myself because the guy broke down and I've never seen a guy do this at Comic-Con before. But he just started weeping and he was saying <laughs> It was it was embarrassing, but the moderator, this Chris Hardwick guy, who went up in my estimation a billion points got down off his stage and he went over and he put his arm around this guy and the guy was just crying and you know saying how much he loved superman and how much superman had inspired him through the years and thank you for bringing him to the screen or whatever and we all clapped for this guy and then he went and sat down and and henry cavill said yeah oh, that's that well, i i understand the the responsibility i have to play superman I, 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 there you are the, the 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 passion some people have some f-ty little bastards like you that were just bawling and pissing their pants no, he didn't say any of those things. Should I bleep that? <laughs> you might have to. I think that's the new F word. You can leave the regular F word, but not that one. Anyway, dude, for some reason that stuck with me because just like this guy, I love Superman, but this guy loves Superman. Right. And for every character, maybe there's somebody like that. And you've got a responsibility if you hold the rights to this to not F it up. And that's why I'm always saying, you know, that some, the right person needs to do Wonder Woman. And you know who that right person was. Yeah, had uh, their chance. You know, to, to inspire millions of girls to be strong and be pretty. And uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't do that with a straight face. Well, all the good things that Wonder Woman is that, that I don't know. You don't know because we've never seen her. There was an animated film a couple of years ago, and I think it touched on what was great about Wonder Woman, but it was mostly Nathan Fillion that I was responding to because they had the brains to cast him as the male lead and he was hilarious. But at the Kevin Smith panel at the end of the night, that same guy got up to talk to Kevin Smith and he explained that he is an, he's an orphan. He was adopted and that Superman was his, that word again, you know, his role model, his icon, his poster boy for adoption, for foster parents or whatever that he had these good parents that showed him the way to go morals and loved him and made him into that man that we can all look up to and that's why he had always loved superman so much and kevin was taken aback by that he'd never even considered 
that aspect of Superman. I, I guess I hadn't either. He explained, you know, that's why I love Batman is because I could be Batman if I weren't so damn fat and if I had a little bit more money and et cetera. <laughs> but I was glad that I got to see that guy again explain. And he's just like, did you see the Superman panel? And Kevin said I hadn't. And he's like, oh, it was so great. And so I, I will reserve 5% of my expectations for this guy who felt like it was everything he had looked forward to and was moved to tears. But 95% of me just doesn't want this Superman interpretation, this version. If Brian Singer had been allowed to make his sequel to Superman Returns, what if it had been awesome? What if it had been like The Dark Knight was to Batman, where there were all these building blocks and they pushed off and took it to the next level? We'll never know. Just like Nobody likes X-Men 3. What if Brian Singer had been able to finish and do a third X-Men movie? How would that have been? Both of those things were taken away from him. I guess if it were me, I would just turn my back on comic book movies forever. I, I always hate those what might have beens. Yeah. When you hear all the Indiana Jones 4 ideas that were squelched, that were so great. You think, oh, shoot, you know, we could have had a second trilogy. And so there, there that's, that's what I have to say. I, I've talked for an hour. Is there anything you want to say? Yeah, well, there's the, there's the other universe in which Brian Singer did do X-Men 3. How was it? Of, it was pretty good. Yeah, I, I, I was already a fan, though, so, you know, it wasn't fair. Okay. <laughs> it is too bad, that whole what might have been. I mean, he didn't turn his back completely because he was involved in X-Men First Class, was he not? Yeah, he was one of the producers. So he didn't give up completely. At least there's that. I guess we'll see. I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't see the footage that you saw, so I'm unable to have the reaction that you had. I, I still have this, you know, you've seen a couple minutes of it, but who knows what there is. Maybe you'll we'll go and watch it and really enjoy it. And the good thing about that reaction that you've had is it probably can't disappoint you really anymore. You expect it to be terrible. So if it turns out to be better than terrible, you're going to go and be like, well, it wasn't as bad as I thought. Huh. It was actually pretty good. So there's that. I mean, you've got your expectations as lowered as they can be. And uh, now anything but utter crap is going to be better than you thought. So there's that. But yeah, I, I still kind of am reserving. I, I like the 5% that you're withholding for that one dude who cried. Yeah, I'm the same way, where I was like, yeah, I'm going to see it. I'm going to have an open mind about it and be like, well, maybe I didn't like the interpretation, or maybe I did. It turned out to work great. I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes. But yeah, I guess that's uh, that gets my goat for next year. I guess it is. Thank you. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again soon. Good night. You know what gets my goat? That this show is produced under your Creative Commons 3.0 license. Why would you bother? And another ugly thing about our society right now is if they fail, if they make a bad movie, it's over and then they'll reboot it again. <laughs> Nobody can learn from their mistakes and say, well, we'll make a better one next time. That stuff doesn't exist now. Where it's like, oh, there was a bad Bond film. Well, screw him. It's like, oh, people didn't like the new Friday the 13th. Well, it's dead or what? You know what I mean? There's no... Well, we learned from our mistake. People didn't like this and that. Let's make another one and do better. It seems like there's three or four franchises that just died without the chance to, well, let's do it better. And in the old days, when it was a franchise, you always knew that there was going to be another one. in it. Maybe I'm completely naive in that. When Superman 3 wasn't as good as Superman 2, Warner Brothers just dropped it and kicked Superman to the curb. So maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, they're not serials anymore. Those when a, when a TV show was bad, you knew that they had another chance in the next episode. Unless you're Firefly, and then it's already over. <laughs> but that's the thing with a franchise. It's it's like a cinematic c TV series. Well, right. you know, there's always going to be more. Indiana Jones Four is the perfect example. Instead of saying, "Well, we tried to give you what you wanted, and you hated it," die. It'd be like, "Oh yeah." Watch this, Indiana Jones 5, like this one. We've worked twice as hard as this. I, I don't know. Yeah, but I, mean, the, but the, I still love the character. I still want to see more adventures with the character, but I can't because they've just given up. 
Yeah, that happened with Indiana Jones too. There was a lot of people that didn't appreciate that one, but they still went on and made part three, and it was one of the best. Although there's only three to choose. One from, of the three so. best. 